I first wrote The Measure of a Man in the early 1970s, and here we are in a new century. And I've just had the wonderful opportunity to once again update this book. And as you know, to include QR codes to enable you to access these videos with your smartphone or tablet. I'm so thankful that we can use this kind of technology for the glory of God. The primary reason, of course, that this book is still in print is that the maturity profile I've used has come directly from the letters that were written by the Apostle Paul 2,000 years ago. And as we all know, his letters are still in print and most importantly, are included in the inspired Word of God. Consequently, each time I've prepared a new edition, I've gone back to the Scriptures and have reviewed what Paul actually had in mind when he listed these characteristics in the first century. And not surprising, I've noted things that uh, I've never seen before. This, of course, is not surprising since I've been given another wonderful opportunity to look more deeply at the very words of God, words that have been inspired by the Holy Spirit. And that, of course, is the beauty of Scripture. This reminds me of what Paul wrote in the book of Romans at the end of chapter 11. Oh, the depth of the riches both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. So in terms of the quality of maturity included in this chapter, I'd like to share a new insight, at least for me. However, before I do, let's review. The word in the Greek text is sophron, which is translated with various English words. In the New American Standard Bible, which I used when I first wrote The Measure of a Man, this word is translated prudent. Other translations have used the words sensible, self-controlled, and sober-minded, having a sound mind, or making sound judgments. As you can see, sophron, or prudent, is a very meaningful word in describing maturity in Christ. One of the most significant passages that helps us understand the meaning of this quality of maturity was penned by Paul in his letter to the Romans. For through the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think more highly of himself than he ought to think, but to think so as to have sound judgment. That is, to think soberly, sensibly, or prudently, as God has allotted to each a measure of faith. Here the words sound judgment are translated from the same basic word, sophron, Paul used in the list of qualities in 1 Timothy chapter 3. It's very clear what Paul had in mind when he used this concept. He was describing humility. He was saying that no matter what our gifts and abilities, they come from God himself. We have no reason whatsoever to be prideful. And if we become prideful, we're not demonstrating sound judgment. We're not thinking soberly, sensibly, or prudently. Paul expanded on this quality of maturity and humility in his letter to the Philippians when he wrote, Do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, but with humility of mind. Regard one another as more important than yourselves. Do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also for the interests of others. Clearly, when Paul used the phrase, humility of mind, it is a very direct connection to the quality of maturity we're looking at in this chapter in The Measure of a Man. Humility of mind and having sound judgment are inseparable concepts. Paul also made it clear in this letter to the Philippians that Christ is our greatest example in being a Sophron kind of man, a man who demonstrates prudence. He, of course, is wisdom personified, which was reflected in all that he did and said during his ministry on earth. And we are, as Paul wrote, to have the same attitude as Christ Jesus. But before you read this chapter here in The Measure of Man, let me share my new insight. To be honest, prior to preparing this video message, I had not made a very important connection between what Paul wrote in Romans 12, 1 and 2, and then here in 12, 3. Yes, I certainly knew that verse 3 follows verse 1 and 2, but here's the important concept I simply had not thought about. To make my point, I want to share all three verses. Therefore, I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice, 
acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. Now, I want you to notice what Paul said immediately following this statement regarding discovering the will of God. For through the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think more highly of himself than he ought to think, but to think so as to have sound judgment, as God has allotted to each a measure of faith. Now, here's my own new insight. The quality we're looking at in this chapter in the measure of a man, that is, the quality of being prudent, is the very first mark of maturity Paul lists in being able to live in God's perfect will. Let me say it this way. In order for any one of us to discover and live in God's good, pleasing, and perfect will, we must not think more highly of ourselves than we ought to think. We must develop a true sense of humility. With these thoughts in mind, take a look at this chapter which deals with some very practical implications in developing this quality of maturity. And as you do, keep in mind, and let me say it again, this is the first thing that Paul mentions in discerning God's perfect will. Would you join me in this prayer? God, help me develop the same attitude as your son, Christ Jesus, when he humbled himself and became a servant to all of us. May I become a prudent man, a man who has a sound mind in order to make sound judgments that are all reflections of true humility. In Jesus' name, amen.